Opening day, I usually say it's my favorite, you know, time of the year, but I think opening of a playoffs is better. <laughs> and uh, actually, my dad used to sing opening day and opening of the playoffs and brought us some good fortune. So I'm thinking of him today, Debbie and I, and our family. And uh, I mean, there's nothing better than this. Mike Vassallo counts 1,033 games that we've played the last seven years and only two games out of 1,033 in the regular season were not meaningful. That's extraordinary. And, uh, you know, with that, I think a testament to the entire organization here, uh, starting with, you know, the, the players and the field staff. And 58 players played for us this year. And uh, Craig and his, you know, coaching team, tireless. Uh, on the baseball upside, Matt Arnold and his team, there's about 250 people. Rick Schlesinger is our team uh, business president here, 210 or something like that. A little less than Matt's team. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> the, the business side stepchildren. And, and uh, you know, we got something in the order of 1,600 folks who come in every day and, and make everything go here. So it, it's, a, it's a true team effort, and I want to thank everybody for, for getting us here. So with that, I guess we'll open to questions, comments. <laughs> this may be more for Rick, but, but for both. You know, you've spent a lot of the last year talking about the future of this ballpark. Do you think it impacts that effort to play postseason games this week? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, playing, playing postseason games helps a lot. It's for, great for the fans, great for the brand. Uh, doesn't hurt on the revenue side, but it, it just, I think, sort of symbolizes the relevance and the importance of the ballpark and the team to the community. Uh, the fact that you know we're, despite uh, hurdles that are beyond our control, we're in the, we're now a perennial postseason contender and. Uh, fans like that and frankly expect it and we mean a lot to the community and and uh, we generate a lot of excitement and a lot of revenue for the state and I think that's relevant in terms of the debate that we're having and uh, I hear a lot in Madison about how important everybody thinks of the team and the ballpark so again this, this in a small way symbolizes that so it absolutely helps to be in the postseason for a whole bunch of reasons. Debate or conversation? I'd say it's more of a dialogue. We've actually had really good receptivity from bipartisan receptivity. And I think that's because this has been a model public-private partnership for 20 years. Uh, we could point to all, any number of examples in other cities where it didn't work. We don't need to do that uh, other than to point to all the successes here. And uh, I'm very excited that we can keep baseball in Milwaukee till 2050 if this all you know, works out. Mark, you mentioned Mike's research on just how few games you've played when there hasn't been something at stake. And yeah, two. <laughs> it's a, it's one a in 2017 record. and one last year. It's a remarkable record no matter what market a team is in. But, of course, in a smaller market, it's, it's, it's hard to do that in baseball. And you know, there's been a lot of changes in players over the years, as there is for every team in year-to-year -year attrition, uh, different front office structures. Um, uh, what do you attribute the consistency of, of the culture of winning that has been created here too? Well, we made it. We made a pledge among the four pledges we made in 2005 when our ownership group took over uh, to have a, a, a team that was perennially, and I can't even pronounce it, but perennially competitive. <laughs> I mean, competitive all the time. And, you know, the others were a good fan experience or best fan experience, great place to work and leader in the community. Uh, if I knew how hard it was to do that, that first one, I'm not sure. We may have led with a different pledge. In fact, there was someone from ESPN sitting right in your seat who in this room was more full then because I was sort of a curiosity. And he looked at me and said, you won't be so cheery when you've lost for 12 or 20 seasons because at that point we hadn't been in the playoffs for over 20 years. Uh, I told him afterward, because I wouldn't say it publicly, well, that is not the plan. <laughs> it was not the plan. And uh, so one of the things they look to is, is stability. You know, Rick back then was uh, one of the co-heads of business, and I must have gotten a 1,000 resumes for business head. Uh, he's still here. 
Uh, Doug Melvin was our, our GM at that time. Uh, he retired after the 2015 season, and he's still actually under consulting contract with us. Uh, you know, David Stearns uh, recently left for another position, which was widely covered yesterday. And, you know, Matt Arnold worked closely with him since uh, the 2016 season. And, and we, you know, that 250 people in baseball ops, we really have had no turnover. So an industry which has a lot of employee uh, turnover, you know, we just haven't had any. And I looked at, you know, from a, uh, as a, you know, my day job, as I call it, as an investor, and we look for stable management teams. So I've looked to create stability here. And obviously stability with the players too, that, that's out of our control somewhat. And uh, they also have limited careers, so they, they need to do what they need to do for their earning. Uh, but I think that that's been a, a mission for all of us to, to be a, a great place to work for players and our employees and colleagues and, uh, you know, and, and to have success. Actually, I am in from ESPN, but I wasn't the one that said that to you. <laughs> Uh-oh. I, I, I did want to ask you about is that one. The, Mike, is that the ESPN seat? <laughs> <laughs> they get like, you got a good spot to kind of off to the side. I did want to ask you about one constant through this this period of, of success, and that's been Craig Council. What has he meant and what he's uh, done to sort of translate everything from what happens in the front office to what happens on the field? So, Craig, I, I, my recollection was he had uh, played for us in 2007, which, which was the case. So he started in our third, you know, R as an ownership group, my third season. It's not the Royal R. <laughs> but I've known him since 2007. Uh, he was a leader then. Uh, in 2011, I've given other interviews on this. And we had a lot of star players on that team that came within two games of the World Series. But the two guys who ran the clubhouse were Craig Council and Mark Kotze. Both ended up as major league managers. That's not a surprise. Uh, when Craig retired, he wanted to work in the front office because he thought he, he wanted to understand that skill set. And he thought he might want to be a general manager someday, which is, by the way, certainly within his skill set. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks have asked me, what's going to happen with Craig? Is he going to... Go work for another team. Is he going to come back? Is he going to go watch his two kids play college baseball? You know, he could be a general manager. Uh, so he has, he's a, uh, he's thoughtful, he's loyal, he's flat out a winner and uh, has been a rich part of our history. And, and, you know, baseball history is two World Series rings. We were in Miami uh, for the, their season in there where they, you know, the, their last games. We're hoping to clinch a division title there. We clinched a playoff spot. When you walk to where all the suites are, you, you come through a, a big access hall, and the first suite you see on the right is it says Council. It's a picture of him with the, in the Marlins uniform, kind of like this. <laughs> and uh, you know, he really impact. He, he's had an impact everywhere he's been, and he certainly had a, a big impact here. Mark, on that note with Council, <laughs> you guys have made it very clear what your position is and your desire is to have him come back. Uh, you mentioned there one of the, the speculations is, will he go to another team? Is that something you guys are concerned at all about? Is him, you know, some other team trying to poach him away? So, you know, Craig and I spoke uh, right around um, Labor Day, and we decided we had a chance to do something special this year, and we were going to just focus on that and pick up the conversation once the season was over. I think that conversation will be open-ended and uh, we'll see how he wants to handle it. I think he's earned that right and clearly we want him back and we'll see what he wants to do. Do you anticipate the committee making a recommendation favoring a move and also I was just wondering the complications with Las Vegas as far as the, determining the territory for TV rights and things like that? Yeah, the committee, we are literally in the middle of our process which you know, therefore, I can't comment. And even if I were to comment, you know, we're, we're still doing our work. In fact, we had a, a meeting uh, a couple days ago. We have another meeting scheduled this week. So uh, we're, we're addressing it in a broad context, and there's a lot to address. Rick, my question is for you about 
I remember the last time we spoke to you during Ben Sheets weekend, it was before the announcement. You were saying we're in the sixth inning of the stadium funding. Then the announcement comes and are we in a new inning now of the response <laughs> with uh, the congressional district you, and everything? But you're glad you said it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I guess the, the real question is with the city and the county responding to the plan in the way that they did, where do you see the next steps? Obviously, it hasn't gone to, to be signed yet or anything like that. Yeah, you know, obviously this week we're going to be uh, attending the hearing. Um, the assembly is having a hearing here in Milwaukee. Uh, a lot of stakeholders are going to be talking. I'll be there. Uh, talking about the ballpark and the legislation and I we've had really good dialogue with the Democrats uh, we've had really good dialogue with the Republicans um, you know they're gonna work at their own pace as much as I would like to accelerate things I, I think I've realized in this process that you can't rush politics um, and the word consensus is usually not a word used in Madison these days, but I'm hearing really good talks and discussions from people. They want to objectively make this work. And what we're talking about is now is the details, uh, but the, the objective to keep us here long-term, have this ballpark funded and have our landlord, the stadium district, have enough funds to meet its obligations. Those are lodestars that everybody seems to be agreeing on. And, and uh, so I don't know what inning we're in. Um, I would love it to be in the later innings, but the reality is, is you know, there's a there's a cadence and a process, and we're respectful of that. No pitching changes there, right? <laughs> no pitching. <laughs> changes. We're, we're, leave, we're leaving them out there. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna complete the game, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Mark, speaking of pitching changes, sort of, you, you mentioned you know wanting to keep the continuity with Craig. And I know you want to keep the continuity with players and competing year to year as well. Do you? How do you view that with some of your key players, sort of approaching the end of of the controllable window? Um, you know, do you feel like this is sort of a chance for them to do what they've been trying to do for the last six years, and maybe the last chance to do it together? Yeah, I think I think the players, you know, talk about that having been in the playoffs together. Uh, you know, five times out of six years and and knowing that, you know, next year could be the the last year. Uh, it's something that I think helps provide motivation. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had a, which Matt Arnold could address better than I could, we've had a focus of trying to not only have that group of players, you know, fully succeed, but have a next group behind them that can continue uh, us staying competitive and, and not have a, uh, a rebuild period. So, uh, look, it's, it's, I think it's a motivator. And, uh, you know, we're, it's, we're all enjoying the ride. Uh, Mark, there was, there was a story in a, in a certain newspaper uh, written by a different reporter. Uh, just I mentioned that Brewers officials are would contemplate a move to a different city if the stadium funding didn't work out. I, I just wanted to give you a chance to comment on that since I don't think you you have since uh, that report was published. Yeah, I, I've never considered going anywhere else. Uh, sure, we get entreaties. We've had entreaties, you know, probably for a decade from cities that didn't know the nature of our, our lease. And uh, you know, right now our lease runs till 2030. And I think we're, whatever inning it is, it's toward the late innings of making sure we'll be here till 2050, and that's our, our sole focus. Mark, uh, we got the news about Brandon Woodruff yesterday. Obviously a tough blow for him, for the team. Just, you know, what's your reaction, and do you feel like you guys are still well-positioned without him? Well, we were, and the reaction at first was a little stunned. Uh, he's a key He's a not only a member of key a member of the pitching staff. He's a key member of the team. You know, you talk about the players who were here. These, you know, for this playoff run. I think what you got: Yelly, Woody, Corbin Burns, Adrian Hauser. Who else? I'm going to miss one now. You know that's going to happen. But I think there were five players who. Oh, Freddie Peralta. Freddie. Freddie's so young. You forget. <laughs> uh, you know, and so that, all that, I think when he, he was up here yesterday, he talked about how hard it is not to be part of the clubhouse. Well, he's a key part of the clubhouse, pitching or not. 
and uh, he's a leader the young pitchers lean on. He's a leader everybody leans on. So uh, you know, we'll just see what – lots of doctors have different – it's hard to find doctors that have the same opinion, so <laughs> he's getting a few opinions here, and we'll see, see what happens. Mark, you talked about when you promoted Matt after David's after David stepped down, you wanted that continuity. But I imagine you never really know exactly how somebody's going to fare until they get that job. Just how you, how would you assess what he's done his first year on the job, the acquisitions he made both before the season and at the deadline? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I remember uh, in the coaching side, Bill Parcells said, "You are what your record says you are," and so Matt's. First year, he's got we've got 92 wins and a division title. That's pretty terrific, and uh, you know I think in, importantly he's been able to put his own stamp on things. What I, I talked to him a lot about as we were transitioning, and, and by the way, his contract anticipated this. So and one of the things I've done in building the organization is make, making sure we have stability in, in succession. Uh, Succession isn't just a, a, a TV show on Fox or whatever, whatever it's on. Um, and and he's so he, I, I told him he needed to he needed to approach things his way, not the way David would or the way he thought I would want. And you know I think the the three way trade he did to get William Contreras and Yoel Pyamps and a third pitcher in the minor leagues is reflective of that. And and the additions I mean. Matt did a lot of things. We've had 58 guys run through the roster. Uh, the additions he made at midseason and uh, with Santana and Kana and, and Josh Donaldson uh, right before the, uh, I guess, the snapshot ended August 31st, plus all the others. If you look at, at the, the guys who contributed, we had a guy contribute the other night who pitched in his first major league game and, and got a win in front of 400 friends and family and coaches and everything else. So. Well, those guys, are, he was our pitcher of the year in the minor leagues last year, I think, in AAA. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. And uh, not a credit to Matt, but to his whole team, because he's got a lot of people working on parallel paths all the time.